Okay. Let's take a look at the formula and the concept of um, surface area of revolution. We'll derive one version of the formula. So the idea is we're going to take a curve in the xy plane, revolve it around some axis, axis, and end up with the surface. And we'd like the area of that surface. Uh, prior to this, we had taken some region in the xy plane, revolved it, and gotten a value, a volume. And so now we're just taking a curve and revolving it and getting a surface. Here's how it's done. What we do is we take and we take a band. We, we look at some interval and on that interval we go and find out where the function uh, value is. Go find the height of the function at those those two points. If you want we can call this the uh, this, this value here is called x sub i and this guy here is called x sub i minus 1. Think of it as the i sub interval. And we go up and we get this, this, this band, basically, where when we attach their y values, um, we get this approximating band. All right. Now, what's the area of this band? Picture yourself uh, basically slicing the, a label of a can and unrolling it. What you end up with is a rectangle. And uh, one, one dimension would be the, the length, and that ends up as their circumference, this distance around the shape is the circumference so 2 pi times the radius and the other one is just, um, just we'll call it the, the length or the height and that would be this this uh, sort of distance here now um, the area of this particular band we need to represent it in terms of the variables that we have we need to figure out what we can call the radius and what we can call the length okay what we're going to do for a radius is take an average we have uh, the y value at the left endpoint, the y value at the right endpoint. We call those p sub i minus 1 and p sub i. Add these up and divide by 2, um, the, y, the y coordinates there. So y sub i minus 1 and y sub i, add it up and divide it by 2. That's an average radius. And then for the, for the length, we take the distance between these two points. When we derived the formula for arc length, what we learned was that the distance between these sort of straight, straight line, sort of polygon distance between two points can be found by this formula. What we used was the mean value theorem to help us represent it like this. But um, you can go back and watch the, uh, the arc length concept video to see the derivation of this. But the distance between these two points is exactly um, represented by, by this quantity here. And delta x is the change in x. F prime at xi star is the derivative at, at some place in between. That's guaranteed by the mean value theorem. And, and so we're going to put that symbol in for the length. 2 pi radius and length will give us the area of the band. And as long as uh, the delta x is small, what we can do is um, say that the yi would be the function value at xi, which is approximately the function value at xi star if the delta x is small. So xi star is just some place in here, xi star. And uh, at xi star, we can basically say that the, the y values won't be that much different. So we're going to do a simplification when delta, when delta, uh, when delta x is small, that this, um, that this value here at yi and the value at uh, f of xi star aren't much different from each other when delta x is small. So we replace um, yi by f, I, f of xi star but then also we can replace yi minus 1. No, difference why, no, no reason why we can do one and not the other. Both of these guys here basically are close to this sort of uh, this place xi star in between not exactly the midpoint just someplace in between so these two guys get replaced both by f of xi star this guy gets replaced by this formula and this will be the area of this particular band to get the total surface area we add up um, we take this a to b and we chop it into n sub intervals and we can then add up 
the band length for each one. That's what this formula represents, the band length for each one. This is when we have a finite number. It'll be approximation, it'll be off, won't be exact. But of course, to get it more exact, what we do is to get a better approximation, we can get it exactly equal when we let the number of subintervals go to infinity. What's happening then is delta x is going towards zero, and we have ourselves the familiar Riemann sum. And so this is going to be an integral. Now this isn't the formula for every situation. This is the one situation where you're trying to find the area of the surface obtained by rotating the curve y equals f of x about the x-axis between a and b. Um, that's what this formula is. Okay. Now, what we need to do is we'll take a look at other situations. Like we can revolve around the y-axis. Maybe we don't have y as f of x. Maybe we have g as f uh, g of y. And so on the next slide, we can look at um, sort of how to get the appropriate formula to use. Okay, as long as the function is continuous and has a uh, has a, a continuous derivative, we can do this. And the area of the surface obtained by rotating the graph around the y-axis would be the following. Same kind of generic formula where we have the radius and then we have this symbol that represents the length or the height. So we have 2 pi times the integral from a to b, radius and height. Think about it, if you're rotating about the y-axis, then your radius is this distance off of the y-axis and that's called x. And so that's your radius. And then ds is the piece of arc length um, the infinitesimally small piece of arc length that, that represents the length. Now, what we have to decide is, is the function given to us y is a function of x or x is a function of y. When it's given to you y is a function of x, then there's no need to replace this x in here. You leave it as an x, and then this ds, we learn from arc length, can be just 1 plus the, the, um, the derivative squared, 1 plus y prime squared dx. That's the uh, piece of arc length there. That uh, ds is equal to that symbol there. And you'll be fine. If it so happens to be that x is a function of y, though, then the x that's in the formula needs to be replaced by the, you know, your integral is going to be in terms of y in that case. And so um, you replace the x by the function g of y, and then it doesn't make sense to call this thing y prime we'll be doing x prime here and taking the, de taking the derivative with respect to x, that's dx dy, we don't normally see that, um, and then we square it for the formula for, d, um, for ds. So ds can take on different value, different um, ways depending on how the function is given to you. If you're given it as a function of y or if you're given it as a function of x, even you could be given it uh, parametrically, but for now we'll just look at functions of x and function of y. Alright, so that's if you rotate around the y-axis. Same thing, but rotate around the x-axis. So the radius then becomes y. And still, we have that piece, that height for the, uh, the length, uh, the piece of arc length there for the arc length. And we look at the same situation. Well, is it given to you y as a function of x, or x as a function of y? If you're given it y as a function of x, then the y that's in the formula for the radius can't stay as a y. This will replace the y that's in the radius, just like this guy replaced the x that's part of the radius. And this part is once again the ds, and it's y prime squared, add one, take the square root, and put the dx on it. But if you have it x as a function of y, then there's no need to replace the y. The y stays as a y for the radius, and then the formula once again is, is in y. So you take x's derivative with respect to y, square it, add one. So it depends on how the function is given to you y is a function of x, or x is a function of y, and it depends on which axis you're going about. y equals f of x, I mean um, the, uh, the y-axis or the x-axis. And theoretically we can revolve around uh, any horizontal or vertical line, but um, this, this is just a setup for um, having that axis be the x or y.